we continue to discuss about the soul from the sama dukha sukham dhiram somrutatvaya kalpate if you notice there is one word dhira that was there in the earlier verse also which we discussed last three days uh, dhira statra namuhyati in the previous verse this was sama dukha sukham dhiram so in this verse the meaning is krishna is addressing arjuna the best among men purusha vishaba he is saying the person who is not disturbed by happiness and distress and is steady in both he is certainly eligible for liberation now here the word for liberation is amrutatva what is this amrutatva amrutatva literally means opposite of mrutatva mrutyu or mruta mruta means death mrutyu means death so uh, one can uh, become or one can attain immortality so krishna is telling how our normal condition is that uh, at the end of a certain life span at the end of duration of life in a particular body we have to quit this body but after quitting this body the question should be asked a similar body or i am going to get a spiritual body so this possibility itself many people don't know uh, the first point is that i change body at death and if i change body what kind of body i'm going to get so uh, here krishna is informing us educating us you are you can become eligible to um, get uh, immortality no more death a body which will not die a body which will not die hmm. so uh, our normal uh, condition in the we are born then there are the miseries of uh, disease old age and death whereas there is another position when there is no birth no disease no old age no death so that position we should understand so it is explained here as spirit soul we are all amruta we are deathless but to attain that state of no more death no more birth no more old age no more disease we have to prepare that preparation krishna is telling if you become dhira if you become a sober person self realized and what is the symptom samas dukha sukham if not if you are not disturbed by happiness and distress and is steady in both conditions situations then you are eligible for amrutatva for immortality no more disease no more old age no more rebirth no more death so this is very 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 desirable nobody likes to die nobody wants disease nobody likes to become old so definitely this is very very desirable now people are trying to avoid death they are trying to avoid disease they are trying to avoid old age but it is not possible to avoid these inevitable uh, miseries 
by some material methods, by some material adjustment. That is not possible. In fact, before this uh, uh, branch of science called chemistry, there was something called alchemy. Alchemy is a forerunner of this chemistry. And in alchemy, in the earlier days, in um, say about 200, 300, 400 years back, those who were involved in this subject called alchemy, they had two goals. They were always trying to formulate or discover or prepare a, a, a chemical which can turn any base metal to gold, just like it can turn iron to gold, just by the touch. Uh, what is called as uh, touchstone, what is called as uh, um, <clears throat> paraspathar, in Hindi they say paraspathar. In Sanskrit it is called chintamani. Hmm. So that was one of the aims of alchemy. And the second aim was they wanted to discover or prepare some kind of uh, decoction or concoction. If you drink that, which they call amrita, you will never die. You will live forever. So these two uh, aims or goals of alchemy, we can understand how people were very, very uh, eager and anxious and very uh, much desire, desirous of this immortality. Nobody wants to die. But Krishna is telling here there is a, a specific way of attaining this immortality. Uh, that is uh, sama dukkha sukham dhiram. Become a dhira. Become sober. So, uh, already earlier it was explained, one who is a dhira, one who is sober, is not bewildered by the change of body at death. One who understands that death is not a destruction of everything about a person, but actually death is the body is going to change. Of course, it's a, it's a different kind of change. It's not exactly the kind of change that we have experienced from childhood to youth to old age. No. It is different. This change is different. That the resemblance is not there. Neither we are able to uh, figure out uh, which is that body? Where is that body? What kind of body? We are not able to figure out. So, it is different, definitely, uh, uh, than the change of body from childhood to youth to old age. It is different, but nevertheless, it is a change of body only. It is a change of body. So, if one can remain undisturbed with the change of body, just like Prabhupada gives example, let's say my grandfather died. If I got a clear understanding, actually my grandfather, the person has not died. It is only his body which, which is old. That body he has given up and he has accepted another body. And that's a real fact. That's the truth. That's the reality. So then there is no cause for lamentation, there is no cause for any, any, uh, any dukkha. So that's how one can tolerate this dukkha, this uh, distress. Hmm? Uh, so Srila Prabhupada gives an example to help us understand. Like in our sleep, we have experience of dream. Hmm? What happens in the dream? In the dream, I create another body and I go different places. I assume different uh, positions. Uh, let's say in the dream, 
I have become a king or I am a king. So I have, I have entered the body of a king and then I am sitting on a throne and I am doing so many things, enjoying some royal uh, comforts. But actually, this may last for very, very short time. When I wake up in the morning, then I know, oh, that was just a dream. It's not of any consequence. Not of any consequence. So, this is like a pleasant dream. So, we don't take it very seriously. We just completely ignore it. Even if there was a, a bad dream, let's say somebody in the dream is seeing a tiger chasing. Oh, there is tiger, tiger. I have to save myself. And sometimes out of extreme fear, somebody may even scream in the dream itself or while sleeping. So the person who is sleeping next to you who is not seeing that dream, say, where is tiger? You say, tiger, tiger, tiger. Where is tiger? There is no tiger. It is just a dream. Wake up, wake up. So as soon as you wake up, you see there is no tiger. Then you understand, oh, that was a dream. So like this, in the dream, it is a fact that we take another body, another position, and that lasts only for the duration of the dream, that's all, that body. Then we give up that body. We come back to the body from which we had left and gone to take another body. Of course, uh, what happens in the dream is a subtle body. It's a subtle body, it's not a gross body. In our wakeful state, we are actually having a, a gross body in addition to the subtle body of the mind, intelligence and ego inside this gross body. But mainly we work with this gross body in the wakeful state. In the dreaming state it is only the subtle body. But that subtle body is created for a short duration and it is uh, finished when the dream is over. So, one who knows that dream after all is not real, so then that person is not going to take whatever happened in the dream very seriously, will completely ignore it with the, the, the facts in the wakeful state. But what we should uh, remember is, even in the uh, daytime, this body what we have is like that body which we got in the dream. Why? Just like the dream body may last few minutes or maybe one hour, this body also will last say 80 years. But after 80 years, when I quit the body, everything is finished. Whatever the possessions, whatever the achievements, whatever the uh, relationships, everything is over. Supposing I had worked very hard and built a nice house or I had purchased a car or I had uh, so many nice family members with whom I, had, I have relationship, very good relationship. Everything is finished when death comes. Everything is finished. So, in the next life, the previous life is like a dream. It's like a dream. It's all over. First of all, we don't remember. And even if somebody is able to remember, what is its value? It's just a memory, that's all. If at all. Somebody has a memory like that. It's all finished. It's over. So, like that, we should understand whether it is wakeful state or sleeping state, both are dreaming. One is, Prabhupada says, one is a daydream, other one is a night dream. The night dream is very short and it is changing very fast every night. Whereas this daydream lasts 
maybe for 80 years or 60 years or 100 years, maximum 100 years. So because it lasts for 100 years, during that span of 100 years, you think, oh, this is reality. But actually that is this uh, daytime with this body, whatever we are doing, whatever we are experiencing, it is another temporary experience only. This we have to understand from the Bhagavad Gita. So therefore, just like in the night dream, whether you had a pleasant dream or unpleasant dream, whether it was Sukha or Dukkha, it is not really of any consequence when you wake up. Similarly, when you quit this body, at that time, of, after quitting this body, what is the relevance of what all Sukha, Dukkha you had, you experienced in your past life? We have had many, many, uh, we have experienced, we have gone through many, many lives. So in the past lives we might have been whatever uh, position, we might have had some Sukha, some Dukkha, some distress, some happiness, some wealth, or we might have been poor. All that is gone, past, over, finished. No more any relevance. No more any importance, no more of any value. So, like that, we have to understand uh, that uh, this life in this body or in the, even in the dream, uh, whatever the experience is, experience is real. Please don't think that these experiences are not real. These experiences are real. In spite of the experiences being real, because it is something that is just passing, it is coming and going, it is temporary, it is not permanent, it is not eternal, therefore of no consequence. While the dream lasts, we may be having fear or we may be having some pleasant uh, feeling, we may be having some uh, nice uh, experience. That is not denied, that is not false. But in any case, whether it is a pleasant experience or unpleasant experience, from the perspective of eternity, it has no real value at all, in the perspective of eternity. So don't become completely engrossed in a spot life of uh, 50 years or 80 years or 100 years. No. We are meant for eternal life. We are meant for eternal life. Just like Krishna. Krishna is eternal. Krishna's form is eternal. Krishna's abode is eternal. Krishna's associates are eternal. We are also one of belong to Krishna. Each one of us. So we are meant for that eternal life. We are not meant for this temporary life of uh, 50 years or 80 years or 100 years. No, we are not meant for this. And in any case, however nice it may be, your situation may be nice, but it is not going to last. And it's not of any use for the future. Absolutely no use. Because your next life is not based on what you were in this life, it has no relation at all, absolutely no relation. Maybe you did some uh, Punya Karma, you may get another body which is nice in the next life. But even that will be over, that will be finished. That will also be for a short while, for some duration, limited duration. Like this we go on changing body after body after body after body. But one fact remains always through all such material bodies, all material lives, that is the constant factor, please remember, is the miseries, uh, the uh, disease, old age, death. That is always there. That's the nature of this material body. That's another reason the scriptures uh, warn us 
don't try to find some material uh, solution to these three problems, three, these three miseries, fundamental miseries, disease, old age and death. Though for some temporary relief, if somebody gets some disease, they may take some treatment or take some medicine, that's okay. But don't depend totally on such remedies because though there may be some cure for some particular ailment or disease, there is no possibility that we can totally eliminate disease altogether. That is not possible. Because the nature of the body, construction of the body is like that. The body itself is made like that. You even in spite of taking all precautions, somebody uh, contacts an infection, then uh, they have to actually, uh, um, the consequences are there. The infection will take time to actually show off the symptoms and then we have to uh, face the consequences, the difficulties. Similarly, old age, invalidity due to old age. And finally, death, which actually uh, takes away everything. Mrityu sarva harascham, uh, everything is taken away at the time of death. Uh, so, uh, the real solution is nothing material, is no material adjustment that is possible for overcoming these fundamental miseries or making a, a, a ultimate permanent solution to get rid of these three miseries completely. There is no such material solution. There is no such material solution. So therefore Krishna is teaching uh, the Bhagavad Gita. Try to understand. He is telling Arjuna's problem was that uh, in this battle, if I kill my uh, kinsmen, then I will be without my near and dear grandfather or my teacher. I lose them. So Krishna is telling, please understand that uh, because this is a Dharma Yuddha, they are going to change the body. If they die in this battle, they're going to change the body for a better one. Uh, they're going to give up this body and accept a new body which will be a better one because this is the Dharma Yudha in which they're fighting. So there is no cause for lamentation. There is no cause for any grief. That is what Krishna is instructing. And Krishna is telling no, not just a better body, in the next slide, he is telling there is a way of getting the best eternal life. That is what Krishna is talking about. Amritatvaya Kalpate. So, we should really be uh, excited about this that uh, Krishna is telling us about immortality. Immortality means. Uh, no more disease, no more death at all. Completely we are free from all miseries, all miseries. A life of eternal life full of bliss and knowledge. No ignorance, uh, no anxiety. Vaikuntha, uh, the spiritual world is called Vaikuntha. Vaikuntha means no um, anxiety, no anxiety at all. No worries. So, that is what Krishna is uh, teaching us here. You can become eligible for this immortality, eternal life full of bliss and knowledge, if you become dhira, if you become uh, undisturbed due to this change of body at death. And while living in this body, you learn to tolerate some temporary happiness and distress. In an earlier verse, Krishna says, Matras parshastu kaunteya shitoshna sukha dukkhadaha agama apayinaha anityaha tamtitikshasva bharata. 
while we are living in this body and preparing for immortal um, um, immortality attaining immortality after quitting this body while we are living in this body Krishna says there will be some uh, occasional uh, happiness and distress happiness of course we don't mind at all but distress if there is some occasional distress some uh, some difficulty or some dukkha some distress Krishna says titiksha tolerate learn to tolerate understanding that it is just a temporary uh, phase any distress while we are in this body it will just come and go it will come and go it will come and go and by practicing spiritual life we are able to develop tolerance positively uh, develop this quality of uh, tolerance how how do we develop tolerance we actually prepare our mind it is actually more than the body the external body it's the inner mind which actually becomes completely uh, disturbed when there is some difficulty or distress or pain or suffering for the body so uh, first of all we understand we should understand from the Bhagavad Gita that this pains and uh, distress pertains to the body and mind and mind as far as mind is concerned the mind can be trained can be prepared to be not affected by the bodily distresses by the bodily pains by the bodily um, uh, uh, whatever bodily conditions so we can prepare so the the best preparation is this practicing chanting of Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare chanting the holy names of the Supreme Lord Krishna that way we can prepare our mind to learn tolerance if there is any distress if there is any anxiety if there is any pain due to this body and of course we can never uh, uh, totally avoid we try to avoid as far as possible we try to avoid uh, pains and uh, uh, diseases and all that but in case, in spite of uh, trying to keep ourselves uh, fit, condition, sometimes if there is any pain or any distress, Krishna says learn to tolerate. So how do we tolerate? By engaging our mind regularly in chanting and hearing the Hare Krishna mantra. So it takes some little time to practice this chanting of Hare Krishna whereby we can get absorbed in chanting and hearing when we are absorbed in chanting and hearing we will not give attention to the uh, distresses the pains uh, which uh, may occasionally come and that way if we learn tolerance and also prepare ourselves uh, then we can actually become eligible for immortality so I have some questions here I'll try to answer them when we offer condolences to the family of a person who has left the body we say we may say may his or her soul rest in peace what is the significance of this actually this uh, rest in peace soul rest in peace is actually atheistic uh, understanding the atheists think that after a person dies uh, no matter what nonsense the person might have done whatever sinful activities it doesn't matter because everything is finished but if there is something like soul which is not uh, uh, going to die or oh, that soul let it be simply lying in peace hmm? that is their wishful thinking the fact is there is no question of uh, soul resting 
after uh, quitting this body at the time of death. No. One is forced to accept another body. One is forced to accept another body. So this concept of uh, soul rest in peace is completely atheistic. As devotees, as followers of uh, authorized uh, uh, scriptures, bona fide scriptures, we understand that at death, the, any person, every person who has taken birth is going to change the body and they will get another body. So there is no question of uh, praying or wishing soul rest in peace. No. Another question. After going back to Krishna, is it that we may come back again to this material world? No. We never come back to this material world after going to Krishna because it is said in the Bhagavad Gita, Yad gatva na nivartante taddhama paramam mama. Many places in the Bhagavad Gita. Krishna says this. If you come to me, you never again take birth in this world of repetition of birth and death. No. So, um, that brings us to the uh, next question. Uh, when the spirit soul fell down from the spiritual world, this question many times uh, arises that uh, we were in the spiritual world and we fell down from the spiritual world to this material world and then uh, the question arises, how did we fall down? When did we fall down? Why did we fall down? So many questions. So first of all, we should understand a very, very fundamental thing. When it is said we were in the spiritual world, we should understand we belong to Krishna's world. We belong to the spiritual world. We are always a resident of the spiritual world. We are always a resident of the spiritual world. We belong to that world. We don't belong to this world. Then what is my present position? Like at night when you go to sleep, you are lying on the bed. But if you are experiencing a dream, in the dream you may be walking somewhere or talking to somebody or doing some other activity. Now, uh, if you were to analyze during the dream state, are you actually lying on the bed or are you uh, doing something else according to the experience in the dream? So, as you understand, both are true. It is not that in the dream body, in the subtle body, it is a fact that you are experiencing something what you are uh, going through in the dream. And the gross body the wakeful state, that body, that body is lying on the bed. Both are true. Similarly, our spiritual form is always with Krishna. In our relationship with Krishna, in our position, uh, situated in our original position with Krishna, it's always in that. Now we are in a dream-like condition. We are going through this material experience in a dream-like condition. That is another reason why Srila Prabhupada says, you simply are going through in this material life, daydream and night dream, two kinds of dreams, that's all. Uh, this is from the spiritual perspective, that is just like a dream, it just comes and goes. And you think that this is uh, something real. It is... Uh, it is uh, real in the sense that it's a real experience, but there is no, it is, doesn't last. It is just an experience. Nothing remains, nothing lasts. Hmm? Just a question of time. So therefore, uh, there is no uh, question of actually falling down from the spiritual world. It is just a case of forgetfulness. Forgetfulness of Krishna, forgetfulness of our self, our original um, self, our original position with Krishna in our spiritual position with Krishna in the spiritual world. So we never actually physically or anything like that, we don't fall down. It is just forgetfulness. So this for revival, memory has to be revived, memory of Krishna has to be revived. 
If you see the end of Bhagavad Gita, Krishna asks Arjuna one question. After instructing the whole Bhagavad Gita, Krishna asks Arjuna, uh, are your doubts now dispelled? Uh, have you become free from all uh, uh, confusion? So Arjuna replies to Krishna, yes, all my doubts are dispelled. I have become free from all confusion. My memory is revived. Nashto mohaha smritir labdha. What is that revival of memory? Arjuna has revived, revived his memory of his relationship with Krishna. So, we also have forgotten our relationship with Krishna. We have forgotten Krishna. We have forgotten our self in our uh, spiritual position. So, we have to revive that man by the process, by the process of devotion service. Next question. Can you please explain about Swadharma? Is it connected to body or soul? Swadharma in our present condition where we are forgetful of Krishna, we are forgetful of our self as spirit soul. Swadharma is connected to the body. It is something to do with the body. Just like somebody is uh, got a particular nature, acquired nature, a acquired nature of uh, sattva guna, sattvic, then they are, uh, uh, swadharma is that of a brahmana. Uh, brahmanical duties they have to do. So that is suited for their acquired nature. If somebody is uh, rajasic, then they have to work like or do a duty of a chatriya. So that is suited for uh, rajasic nature, rajasic uh, uh, um, quality, like that. But there is something else called sanatana dharma. That is our eternal dharma, eternal duty. Eternal duty is in relationship with Krishna. It is completely spiritual. It is something to do with the soul. So that is after we uh, completely become situated in proper knowledge about who we are, that I am spirit soul, I am part of Krishna, I have a relationship with Krishna. So when we become situated in proper understanding, proper knowledge, and all our misconceptions are clear, then our actual dharma begins, sanatana dharma, real dharma, the actual eternal dharma, eternal dharma begins, eternal duty, eternal activity begins, and that is devotional service. So the goal of this uh, swadharma in terms of uh, acquired nature and some uh, duties which we have to do in this life, in this body, uh, all that is aimed at uh, ultimately coming to the position of sanatana dharma. It is aimed at that, provided you follow the scriptural directions or follow the authorized process. Simply by doing some self-assumed duties, people cannot uh, uh, automatically come by doing any so-called duty. Uh, no, you have to do your duties in accordance with scriptural directions. And then you, are, you can expect that if you follow the scriptural directions, you will come to the state of sanatana dharma, the eternal position, eternal duties. We'll stop here. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Self-assumed duty. Come. No, you are in accordance with scriptural directions. You can expect that if you follow the scriptural directions, you will come to the state.